Greetings once again, Cover Killer Nation. It's a great day to be a metal fan. It's always a great day to be a metal fan, but it's especially important on a day like today. Well, actually, it'll be very important on March the 27th, but it's important today because I get the opportunity to review and share with you my thoughts <clears throat> on the new Meshuggah record, Kulos. Now, of course, Meshuggah is one of these groundbreaking bands that started in the late 1980s, but really gained a lot of momentum in the 1990s, and have gained a lot of cultural relevance today, considering within the past year and a half to two years, there has been the evolution of a new subgenre of heavy metal, our beloved heavy metal, entitled Gent Music. And Meshuggah has been kind of looked upon by these bands as the god of gods, you know, the, the house of the holy, the, the, the way in which to be. These are the primary influence for a lot of these bands, and you can hear a lot of Meshuggah-isms in the music of Jet. However, we are here to review the Forefather. We are here to review the Forebearer. We are here to review the Adam of Jet. Back whenever it wasn't even called Jet, because this was a long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Coloss is an album that is following up Obzen, which was well-received by a lot of people, but also can garner some... Uh, mixed reaction amongst longtime fans. However, most fans understood the idea that Mashoga was a band that was constantly innovating. Uh, they weren't going to always sound like Destroy, Race, and Prove, their landmark 1995 album. And this is something that these fans have been very, very patient with, not to mention also very, very happy with. Uh, they have liked the fact that their band has really found ways to tinker and toy with their sound enough where there can be... Uh, no two albums that really sound completely 100% the same, although those who are maybe not as big of fans of the band may argue otherwise. Now, with an album such as Coloss, the one thing that I'm going to notice right off the bat whenever I listen to this is that there is a lot of similarity. There's a lot of very, very overused ideas. And by overused ideas, I don't necessarily mean that these are uh, recycled riffs or ripoffs of other material by other bands or even by this band itself. Uh, instead, I'm going to say that this is a repetitive nature. Uh, a lot of these songs will have a lot of repetition to it. And if this is something that kind of troubled you a little bit with the single that was released earlier in this year and that I reviewed uh, late last month, uh, then this is going to be an album that may be a bit of a tedious exercise for you. And that's something that I'm going to say right off of the bat. Because this is something that is employed in numerous different moments on this album. However, this is also an album that does boast a little bit of variety in that aspect, considering it seems as though it's almost like the odds and evens rule that I've encountered with albums before, where one song in particular will seem to follow that motif that I've just presented of uh, a lot of repetition with minor uh, structural changes, with uh, minor vocal changes, with the uh, presence of uh, perhaps a sort of chorus or bridge, uh, whereas the song directly after it seems to take things in a more aggressive pattern that tends to kind of amp up uh, the the whole uh, the whole scope of the music, so to speak. It kind of takes it in a different direction, only to seemingly revert back. And this is something that whenever you listen to this album, especially if you're not somebody who happens to be the biggest Meshuggah fan, it can actually uh, degrade the experience a little bit. It becomes a little bit annoying. It almost becomes predictable in a way. Uh, however, at the same time, you're also kind of uh, expressing a lot of anticipation toward the next song because you're thinking, well, uh, this is the song that really sets this album on fire and gets it on track, you know, and the momentum will never be deviated uh, from again, you know. This is the momentum changer, the game changer. And it just doesn't seem to happen. There seems to be so many uh, areas and moments on this record where they are just uh, very, very satisfied with uh, repetition of an idea that they have introduced uh, very near the beginning of the track and kind of make that the core uh, framework and skeleton of the song. And for a band that is definitely a innovator, for a band that infuses a lot of jazz, not to mention also is the masters of awkward timing patterns uh, with regard to their music structure, this is something that almost can be seen as a bit of a disappointment. However, that's not to say that these are not present on this release. In fact, they're present even within these uh, repetitive notions. Uh, it's something where even the patterns of the repetitions are uh, somewhat in a uh, very uh, unorthodox fashion. So, 
those of you who do enjoy that core element of their music, do not be wary of this album. Instead, uh, you will just have to not look as hard in order to find what you are looking for. Overall, though, uh, the experience of listening for, uh, to this album from start to finish uh, can be a very tedious endeavor and can be one that could uh, easily sway your opinion on this album because of the fact that it does seem to be a bit on the inconsistent side. Uh, it didn't seem to me like the, uh, the album really got started for me until track number three, and uh, that's usually not a good sign to start. Uh, you usually want to have something that really grips your attention uh, right away in order to uh, really fuse uh, infuse a person and involve them into the record. And while the first track did certainly, you know, get you kind of going, it, it didn't necessarily put the foot directly onto the accelerator. Uh, that's kind of uh, where I have the notion that it's not exactly the best. However, the one thing I will say is that the closing uh, number on this album, which is entitled The Last Visual, is a very, very unique step in the right direction. Uh, the reason for this is that it is completely different than anything that you're going to hear on this record. It has a very unique element to it. It's almost as though it's painting some sort of very haunting picture uh, that is uh, really incorporated into your brain through sound and through song. Uh, this is an instrumental track that is just a very haunting little finale to a record that probably could have used more deviations or uh, experimentations uh, of this variety in order to uh, not only capture your imagination but also build a certain amount of atmosphere to this record because this is an this is a record that does seem to be a little bit lacking in overall atmosphere it just feels very bland almost like it's uh, uh, atmospherically devoid, or, or you're just kind of experiencing this all within the same, you know, short moment. You know, there's no real deviation all of that much, and that is somewhat of a disappointment. So, overall, I have to say that this album did not strike my fancy as much as I really thought that it would. I'm not going to call this an overall disappointment, because this is... Come on, this isn't a Ludovini Mansanis, this isn't Lulu, this isn't anything like that. It's just something that seems, in uh, retrospect, to be a little bit lackluster. Almost like it needs a little bit more, so I'm going to have to give this a 7.25 out of 10. However, there's another thing that I wanted to say, and like the Overkill video yesterday, even though I may not have given this a 9 like I gave Overkill yesterday, I still believe that you guys should definitely go out and pick up this album next Tuesday, especially if you guys happen to be hardcore Mashuga fans or even somebody who considers himself a casual fan. Because once again, I'd like to see this stuff. I'd like to have to put this stuff up on the top 20 charts. I'd like to see Metal do very, very well uh, the following week after uh, the release of these albums on March the 27th. So, if you are at all interested in Meshuggah, this is an album for you to pick up, and I think that this is something that you should do. Do not just download this album and just allow, allow it to sort of sit in your music folder and go nowhere. Instead, go out and pick up the physical record. You know, kind of take that challenge and just really enjoy it for what it is. Some of you may consider my opinion on this record to be wrong, or I'm I, maybe I'm missing the point altogether or something like that. And I encourage you to definitely uh, state your reasons why this album is fantastic or why maybe I gave it too high of a rating uh, in the comment box underneath. You can also reach me at the official Cover Killer Nation Facebook page. And I will talk to you guys next time with the next album review.